practical tutorial number 13. In this one we're dealing with competency 13, DTMF and CTCSS tones. Let's have a look at the uh, competency number 13. With the material provided, demonstrate the correct use of voice repeaters with and without CTCSS and DTMF tones. The method in the middle. By the use of, amateur, of an amateur radio station, preferably on air, so it can be simulated off air, but it's preferable that it be done on air. Most assessors will probably simulate this if they don't have the facilities available to them. The candidate demonstrates the use of voice repeaters with and without CTCSS or DTMF tones. For example, repeater access with and without IRLP. The candidate must demonstrate the need to identify the station before transmitting DTMF tones and may incorporate other elements of comedy such as the protocols prior to transmission. That's number 10 again, remember? This task must be completed three times. When in fact, when you used the, uh, when you did the uh, earlier competency number 11, I think it was, when you went on air, um, that could have been done through a repeater, uh, exactly the same way. Uh, the difference being is that a repeater may have required a sub-audible tone. I'll talk about those more in a moment. No, the, the third one, the candidate demonstrates a rudimentary, now this is the key here, rudimentary knowledge of the use of CTCSS and DTMF tones, voice repeater, accessing and placing a call on air. You only require a rudimentary knowledge of these two types of tones that are used on amateur radio. Let's look first at DTMF. DTMF are the tones that a telephone uses. Users. If you've ever dialed a mobile phone, it goes beep, 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 that sort of nonsense. They, they're DTMF tones. They're audible. You can hear them. They're used on amateur radio to control repeaters. They're used on amateur radio, for example, and I've got a diagram here of uh, an IRLP contact where we have a, a, a repeater connected to the internet and another repeater connected to the internet. One's in Australia, one's in the USA, and two amateur radio stations, one in a house, one in a mobile, are communicating from Australia to the USA and back and forth on VHF. Now, the way they did that is they had to transmit DTMF tones, audible tones, to the repeater, and the repeater interpreted those tones and connected the two repeaters together in Australia and USA. When they're finished, They'll transmit some further uh, DTMF audio tones and the connection between the two repeaters will be dropped. Most modern amateur radios have a DTMF tone generator in them. Those that don't, you can get a tone generator. I've got one of these. And you can just hold it up against the microphone and key in the numbers. For an IRLP contact, if you've got an IRLP repeater, and you want to connect it to a repeater in another overseas country, you, you have to look up the code for that repeater, transmit to your own repeater, type in the four-digit code for the repeater in another country, and they are linked together, and then you can communicate on VHF between those two countries. Most modern amateur radios come with a, D, with a DTMF pad built into the microphone like this one here. If you want to play with a tone generator online, there's a tone generator there that makes DTMF tones. You don't have to know what the acronym DTMF stands for. You just need to know that DTMF tones are audible, you can hear them, and they're used to control and switch repeaters. If a repeater was on top of a mountain and very hard to get to, for example, the repeater operator might set up a computer and a DTMF decoder and transmit to the repeater a DTMF code and then the repeater would report back its power output. 
another DTMF code, the repeater could report back the wind speed or the temperature and so on. So DTMF tones are audible and they are used to control repeaters, to get information from repeaters and to connect repeaters to one another. I've just gone to that website quickly that was on the last slide <coughs> to let you hear for yourself what DTMF tones sound like. There are actually two tones. So number one, for example, is, is 1,209 hertz plus 697 hertz. They're both sine waves. So when I produce, and these are all audible, they're all in the hearing range. You do not have to remember these numbers. This is just uh, for a bit of fill-in. I hope you can hear that. That's what they sound like, just the, the sounds on telephone. And they are used to switch repeaters, connect them to one another, and to interrogate repeaters for information about their power, temperature, wind speed, and things like that. That's all you need to know about DTMF tones. CTCSS tones, on the other hand, are subaudible. You cannot hear them. So if there's a need to have a tone on an amateur radio while you're talking, it would make sense then to use a tone that no one can hear because it's below human hearing. The tone is present and it's not going to interfere with anyone. And the reason why we would like to use a tone like that sometimes is to protect the repeater from interference. If a repeater is on VHF and getting interference from some industrial noise, then the industrial noise will go straight into the receiver of the repeater and be retransmitted. However, if the rece repeater's receiver requires a subaudible tone to be present, otherwise it will not listen to the signal, then an interference, some interfering industrial noise, will not open the repeater. The only way the repeater can be opened is by transmitting on its receiver frequency and for there to be the presence of a CTCS subaudible tone. And this can drastically reduce the amount of interference a repeater gets. I'm just going to scroll down. I've done a summary there of the two tones in writing and these are the CTCS tones. You do not have to remember any of these. You, you need to remember this what I've put here. But you can see with the CTCS tones the highest ones 254.1 Hertz. So you're not going to hear these. They're, they're below our human, uh, hearing range and we use them we put them on a radio repeater's receiver so that it's not enough to transmit to the repeater on its frequency. You must also switch on in your transmitter a CTCSS tone of the appropriate frequency for that repeater. So you're going to have to look up a list and find out if that repeater has tone guard on it, CTCS tone, and what frequency it is. If you try to transmit into that repeater without a tone, it's as if the repeater is not there. That's it for competency number 13. I hope your practical goes well for you. Cheers for now. This is Ron VK2DQ.